Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. It has been a while since I've recorded a video. I actually did record a hot sauce video. If it's finished, I'll put it right here, here. I always forget which side it is. But um, yeah, so I'm parked over here at this uh, Table Mesa RTD bus stop. I'm right on top of the parking garage. This is a good spot. I got this photo here. And I wanna try to recreate that. Although some of the street lights aren't on right now, which is kind of a bummer, even though the um, sun has fully set. So I'm hoping they come on any minute now. They look really cool in these long exposure shots. Um, yeah, so as you see in the title, this is volume one or episode one of Stars and Stripes. I had the idea for this little series a while back. Basically Stars and Stripes is <clears throat> anything to do with long exposure and astral photography. Something that, both of which I'm not very good at. I'm learning how to do these things, but um, yeah. So in case you don't know what a long exposure is, a long exposure is where you set up your camera to hold the, uh, the shutter open for longer than a normal photo. Usually a shutter is only open for a fraction of a second, but in a long exposure, you'll leave the shutter open for three seconds, five seconds, eight, 13, 30, or even longer than that, depending on whatever effect or outcome you're looking for. In these um, highway long exposure shots, I'm doing anywhere between three to usually 13 seconds is kind of what I like the way it looks. You can do 30 seconds, but you end up with a lot of light data. Um, yeah, so that's all it is. You leave the shutter open for a longer time than normal. And what the camera does is it keeps the, think of it as just like a long snap, right? So when you take a picture with a camera, you can hear the audible shutter, you can hear the chick. And what that really is, is the shutter slides down in front of the sensor and essentially cuts off the light. And depending on how long that shutter takes to close, dictates how much information the sensor captures. And as a general rule of thumb, the longer you leave it open, the longer it takes to process. It makes sense. The internal computer in the camera takes that 13 second exposure and it says, how much light did I see during that time and where did I see it and at what intensity? And then it puts all that into one photo. And they look really cool. And before I ever had a nice camera like this, I was always like, how do they get those cool pictures? You see those pictures of like, city skylines that are you know pink with perfect sunset and you just see these streak of white and red for the you know incoming and outgoing traffic and they're really cool so that's what i'm about to do now i'm going to get on my headset or headlamp and uh put my red light on and record with my phone the settings that i use on my camera in order to capture these photos so come along for the ride, the first ever episode of Stars and Stripes. I hope you guys enjoy. Um, I've been really bored and this is something that I think will help keep me entertained and hopefully you as well. So let's go. Alrighty, so this is the camera menu on a Sony Alpha 6600. And I'm gonna show you some of the settings that I use when setting, taking these pictures. I tried to record this outside, but it's just too loud with the highway, so I figured this would make it a lot easier. So on the Sony Alpha 6600, and I'm pretty sure a ton of other A6000 series cameras, um, there's cool ways to navigate the menu. And one that I just found out today, if you use this um, f-stop setting here in the menu, it actually changes the page that you're on, which is really nice. And there's a few other ways you can scroll left and right, or you know, scroll all the way through and then go up to the top and then and then scoot over. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to shoot in JPEG and RAW. JPEG is, you know, what you normally think of when you think of photos that are already edited and whatnot. Now RAW will allow me to get all of the data from the photo that I can edit in post in Lightroom or um, Photoshop. I'm just going to do them in Photoshop. I'm not very good at either of those programs. And then you can set the quality of the picture. I like the highest quality, 24 megapixel and then there's these other settings here. So yeah, and then the other setting that we're going to do is we're gonna come up here to the top. Let's see if you can see this. Over here at this wheel, we're gonna be in manual, and then we're also going to go to 
let's see, we're going to want to set up the focus to be manual. I'm just, I can't remember autofocus. Here we go. Focus mode. We're actually going to go into going to go into manual focus. And yeah, I'll walk you through a few of the settings out here. Um, so if I push play here, it will go into my menu. Is Let's see. Okay, lens cap is off. So you have to play with and we're just going to do single shooting. And what I like to do is I set up a timer for two seconds. That way I can click the button and then it'll wait for a second and then take the picture for however long. This is a way that I've found to get around downloading a stupid app or having any type of remote. So this is one way you can just set up your camera on your tripod or my little, like this thing, the little squishy tripod. And then you don't have to mess around with any of that crap. So we're going to do two second timer. And yeah, we're just going to be in single. Yeah, we're going to be in that. And then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to play with the ISO and the shutter speed and blah, blah, blah. I'm probably going to be doing, let's go ahead and change. You're, I usually like my ISO as low as possible. And I can't remember what my f-stop is, but I'm pretty sure my f-stop gets a little bit closed and then the exposure ratings go up on this. So let's go outside. Alrighty, so hopefully you can hear me over these cars. I'm gonna go over some settings here. This is a 13 second exposure at f5.6. My exposure value is set to zero. When you play with the ISO, f-stop, and how long the exposure is, you can get these numbers to jump up and down. For example, if I change how long this is, we get positive. If I make it shorter, we get negative. So we're trying to shoot for a nice balance right at zero. So I'm going to go ahead and take this 13 second picture. So the camera goes black for however long your exposure is. And then you're going to hear the shutter close. And then it's going to process the image. And once it's done processing, it'll show up with whatever your whatever you end up with. And then you can always go view the photo. So you can see it's pretty bright, kind of blown out, but you get a really cool effect.